want to go ahead and get into the word of the Lord on today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of John, and we will look at verse number 14. The Gospel of John, and we will look at verse 9 through 14. Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. Amen. Amen. In the Gospels, Matthew, and we're going to be in John chapter 14. And anytime you see writing in red, we know this is Jesus speaking. Amen. John chapter 14 we'll see where Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version, which may read slightly different than your King James version or any of your other versions. However, it'll be in a way in which you can understand and that you can apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. We praise God for those watching us on Facebook, through YouTube or on Instagram, we praise the Lord for every single one of you. John chapter 14, verse number 9, the NIV reads, Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father let me back up here for a second philip asked the question can you show us the father so this is why jesus responds like this don't you know me philip even after i've been among you such a long time anyone who has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father don't you believe that i am in the father and that the father is in me the words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority rather it is the father living in me who is doing his work believe me when I say that I am in the father and the father is in me or at least believe in the evidence of the works themselves. Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I'm in the father the father is in me but something is going to shift when i go to the father and i will do whatever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son you may ask me for anything in my name and i will do it can you say amen for the reading of his word look at that verse 12 I know I said a lot and um, I want to give you what the Lord has given me but verily truly I tell you King James said verily verily I say unto you whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing but they will do even greater works than these because I'm going to the father I want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject generation greater generation greater I know you've heard of generation X and generation Y and generation Z and all of the generation baby boomers what have you I want to address generation greater speak Lord your servant heareth and he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church that someone could be saved, set free, healed, delivered, and empowered in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. 
generation greater. As I mentioned, as we started this history series, whether you're looking at black history, whether you're looking at American history, or whether it's world history in general, that we identify significant moments of significant people who made significant impacts for the advancement of a nation, a country, or, or even more expansive, the entire world. We call them history makers. If you recall, on the first installment of this history series, we defined a history maker is one that by acts, ideas, or existence, they modify the course of history. By their acts, their ideas, or their very existence, it modifies, it shifts, it alters the course of history. We declared and we decreed that this is going to be a year that history is made in your family. That this is going to be a year that you see significant acts. That God gives you significant ideas. And that your existence will have such a level of significance that is going to shift the trajectory of your family. Whether you believe it or not, hidden, trapped, or even buried on the inside of you is one of the most powerful tools unknown to mankind. And that is something that has the capabilities to change the course of history forever. What is that tool, you might ask? It is your God-given gift. This gift that God has placed in you. On last week, we talked from the Apostle Paul, dealing with history and, and how we have history with God. And the history with God was sometimes introduced by the history of those who have come before us. We talked about how, how Paul made mention um, that there is a gift on the inside of you. And he said, stir up the gift of God, which was given to you by the laying on of my hands. So the gift is in us. The gift that we have is in us, but we have the responsibility to stir it up. And Paul was writing to Timothy, representing the next generation of leadership. He says to him, which we touched on last week, that I'm reminding you to stir up the gift of God, which was in you by the putting on of my hands. And for this reason, I'm reminding you to stir it up. I'm reminding you to stir it up. For this reason, Paul says, it suggests that something was mentioned before that triggers the statement that's coming thereafter. Many want to jump into the stirring of their gifts without knowing or understanding this reason for the stirring. Paul is speaking about the power of relationship that was first introduced by Jesus in his Gospels. Paul is speaking how the relationships that we have should grow and should foster into maturity, especially if we're gifted. Paul, an apostle by the will of God, he's speaking to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God and of Christ. He's referring to and inferring about God and his son Jesus as an example of relationship. God, the father, and his son Jesus is an example of relationship that's full of grace mercy and truth 
So not only are we recipients of this grace, of this mercy, and of this peace that comes from God through faith in Jesus, but another dimension of grace Another dimension of favor, another dimension of mercy and peace comes from covenant relationships in the spirit. Yeah. So last week in our message, History with God, we talked about the unfeigned faith that trickled down from Grandma Lois down to Mama Eunice which was now also I'm persuaded and convinced it's in you, Timothy. Faith is instilled. As we know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is instilled and faith is, is it's, it's instilled and it comes as a direct association with faith filled words from faith filled people. Faith is instilled with a direct association of faith-filled words from faith-filled people who have relationship with you. So Paul is telling him from the example I saw with Jesus of how the relationship Jesus had with his father enabled him to move in dimensions of faith that the world has never seen before. And it is that faith that has been imparted into us who believe. And now Paul was telling Timothy, and that faith should be in you, so that's why you got to stir it up on the inside. The gift is in you. The gift is imparted. You have to stir it up, but you got to make sure that it has been given through and fostered by relationship. The gift came from God, but was activated by set hands, validated and authorized through relationship. I'm going to say that one again. The gift came from God, but was activated by a father, by his set hands that is validated because of their relationship. Many people have gifts, and, but they don't have set hands to activate the gifts. So giftings, and, and the gift comes without repentance. And gifts will make room for you. But can you imagine a gift making room for you without the activation of anointed destiny? So your gift has brought you to a room that you don't have the activation to really impact the room. So we have giftings that bring us to rooms where we perform rather than giftings that bring us to rooms where we transform. Yeah, so our, our gifts will make room for us to bring us before great men, but then if we don't have it activated by relationship, when we get before great men, we try to please them, we try to impress them, or we try to compete with them. But when you have gifts that have been fostered and developed by relationship, then you allow your gift to be corrected, to be chastised, and to be put on display to be used. Therefore, when the gift brings you before rooms, you have the character, and you have the stamina, and you have the tenacity to transform the room for the glory of God. But our gifts without relationships can be misguided. Because gifts will make room for us. But if, it does, if we don't have relationships that, that, that speak into us, that help develop us and shape us and form us, then it could be misguided. Amen. The gifts come from God, activated by hands, but authorized through relationship. And, and, and another thing I must mention is many think that the gift will ignite just based on connections and associations. 
So we'll connect and we'll align with certain people because we're trying to get people to buy into the making room for our own gifts. Yeah. And so we'll align and we'll connect and we will have these types of, of associations, but not real relations. Mm -hmm. So we have these connections and associations. All right. But but in actuality, uh, the gift ignites on a connection and association that is bound by a relationship. And this is what authorizes impartation. So you see the Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You, you can see generational blessing, anointing, favor, flowing multi-generations because there was relationship. Jacob didn't just say, you know what, let me just, let me see if I can rock with Isaac for a little bit because I know what Isaac is capable of doing. No, there was a relationship where Isaac had to train Jacob and prepare him for what was promised before we even got here. So, so relationship is what put them in alignment for oil to fall. Isaac had to be in relationship with Abraham in order for him to understand that he was supposed to take it to the next level. So the relationship understood that if my father said lay on an altar, I'm laying on an altar. He didn't question his dad. He, the only question he said was, where is the sacrifice? His dad said, God got this. Just come on the mountain with me. And he laid there while he was being tied up. And his dad had the dagger in his hand. He was obedient and willing because of the relationship with this father. That surely my father knows what's best. And because of that relationship and faith through that relationship, it released an anointing that not only brought divine help where an angel spoke and said there's a ram caught in the thicket not only that but then Isaac now becomes a patriarch and then now his son becomes a patriarch and they continue to walk in obedience with God all because relationship authorizes impartation so you see the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see the Moses and the Joshua. You see Elijah and Elisha. Uh, yeah, you see Naomi and Ruth. You see Mordecai and Esther. You see these relationships is critical to how the, the, the work that's done. The relationships was, was critical to the effectiveness of the work that was done. Okay, because doing work without relationship to the body or relationship to Christ is just that, is work. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that we want to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. But without being perfected or matured, brought to a place of equipping and maturity, when we work ministry, it'll be ineffective if there is no relationship to the body. So that's why he gives apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to form relationship to help perfect and equip so that we can effectively work ministry. But we're seeing us work in ministry, trying to do the works of ministry with distorted relationships, fragmented relationships, broken relationships. Yeah, and, 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 and because of this, it limits the generation greater from coming to fruition. Yeah. Uh, and and so, so Paul is quoting or, or coming after the teachings of Jesus who talks about the power of relationships between him and his father. I thought it was interesting <clears throat> because when I even look at some of the great uh, people who've done great significant things, I'll name a few, um, especially in Black History Month. So there's a man by the name of Don Dino. Don Dino, um, who is the father of Edson Aranches do Nascimento. Y'all don't know who that is. Um, um, his, his name is Pele. Don Dino, Don, y'all know Pele. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so you know Pele, but didn't know Don Dino. You know Pele. But 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 you but you didn't even know his real identity. 
you knew what everybody called him. But you didn't know who his father named him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so many of us are enamored by what we do and how people respond to what we do. Pele. But, but not understanding there was a Don Dino who saw something else. And, and see, oh God, Jesus said, when you see me, you have seen the father. You don't know Don Dino, but when you see Pele, you've seen Don Dino. Yeah, his, he... he was a professional soccer player himself, got injured and had to leave the game to start working for his family. And, but he taught his son how to play. His, his son saw his father and an entire nation completely depressed and upset because they lost the World Cup in 1950, 54. They lost the World Cup, and because of that, Pele saw his father crying. And he said, Dad, one day I'm going to help win the World Cup for Brazil. And his father said, well, if this is what you're going to do, then you need this, you need that. And he prepared him, trained him, developed him, and put him on the path towards greatness. Yeah, and now here is Pele, who has been retired for more than 40 years, but yet still making money off of his name, off of his image, off of his works because of what was important, imparted by Don Dino. <laughs> uh, and so, and so, so uh, but we all know Pele, whether we know the game, can play the game or not but had no idea that there was somebody else that prepared him. Mm, standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, y'all know Joseph Washington Bryant? No. That, but y'all know Kobe Bryant. <laughs> you know Kobe Bryant. Yeah, Kobe Bryant. You you see him, the, the the one of the greatest ever to do it. Uh, but 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 his father was the one that exposed him to the game. His father was a professional athlete in the NBA as well and did well. wasn't a superstar, but he was in that dimension. Knew what it took to get there and what it would be to sustain there. And so he had to give it to his son. His son was watching this at a young age and he imparted the will, the passion, the fight, the desire for the next level. And therefore, Kobe comes and he takes it to the next level. Y'all may not know, unless you're a basketball head, Dale Curry. If you're a basketball head, you know Dale Curry. But for those who are not real basketball heads, you know Seth Curry and Steph Curry. Brothers playing in the NBA. Dale was a decent player, but there was an anointing on him that produced double <laughs> that he got two sons playing in the league. So when you see Seth Curry and Steph Curry, who is arguably the best shooter in the game of all time, it was imparted by Dale Curry. Relationship. What I thought was interesting is y'all know Denzel Washington. And only a few know David Washington. Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, I'm flipping the script. All right. David Washington is not the father of Denzel. David Washington is the son. But the works of Denzel is so notable that 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 David is just getting started and he received the impartation through relationship but yet his story is still being written 
So you you know you know at Cinerances, you know Pele, but didn't know his father. You know Kobe, but didn't know his father. Some know Seth and Steph, but didn't know their father. But you know Denzel, but don't know the son. Uh huh. So, 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 so in the text, uh, Philip says, Show me the father. And Jesus says, You, you, you've been here with me and you still don't know me. So, you want to know the father, but you don't even know the one you've been walking with. You don't know. The son. He said, how long have I been among you? Verse 9. Don't you know me, Philip? You don't know me? Huh. And so now Jesus uses this as a tool to start talking about the value of the relationship. You want to go to see Denzel when the next generation of greater is David. Because David has the benefit of growing up studying Denzel <laughs> and so because of what he see Denzel do whether it was carbon copy whether it was ricochet whether it was fallen whether it was training day whether it was uh, you go down the list he was able to watch and say that's my daddy but the daddy told him, you see why I did this, how I did this, and I had to tap into this because daddy is preparing to say, this is my son. Oh, I feel like preaching here. Uh, uh, so, 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 so him watching, so the son watching the father one day is going to switch where the father is saying, this is my son. And so why Jesus was kind of flippant with his answer here is because Philip is saying, show me the father. And then Jesus says, well, don't you know me? Weren't you around when the heavens opened and the spirit descended like a dove and a voice from heaven cried saying, this is my beloved son in who I'm well pleased. You're saying, show us the father. So he tells him, but, but, but when you see, look at verse 10. The end of verse 9, he says, how can you say, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the father? And that the father is in me. Relationship. We are connected, not just associated. We are related, not just associated. There is a relationship, there is a depth, so that he is in me and I am in him. Uh-huh. So, so, so when you see him, he said, the words that I'm saying to you, I don't speak in my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me Who's doing, watch this, his work. Yeah. So even what I'm doing, it's not even mine. <laughs> I'm continuing what was started in my father. Yeah. So, so, so that's why, uh, Jacob, you're not walking with all of these wells because you somebody. Jacob, you were a trickster and a con artist. And you got this favor because God made a promise to Abraham. And you are walking out what was already given to the father. So he said, Jesus, this is Jesus, y'all. Jesus who said that even the stuff that I'm doing, it's not even, it's not even my work. Yeah, this is this is rather this this is the father who's living in me. We are so connected, we are so in relationship where I see what he sees, thinks what he thinks, on the level that he's thinking, he showed me, trained me, developed me to the point that what I'm doing, I'm doing for him. But not realizing that what I'm doing for him is even greater than what he thought. He, 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 I'm, the, the, I'm in the Father. The Father is in me. 
We're in this together. Now, just tell somebody we're in this together. Now, verse 11, I got to hurry up and close this. But believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And if you don't believe that, at least believe the evidence of the works themselves. Okay, what do you mean? The impact of the works of Jesus was only impactful by the relationship with his father. The reason why Jesus' works were great is because they weren't his works. He was carrying out the work and the will of his father. He was just obediently doing what his father wanted. Yeah. And in doing so, it produced evidence that there's something greater that comes from relationship than with just association. Yeah. So because there are a lot of people doing works, but not everybody was healing the sick. A lot of people were doing works, but not everybody was walking on water. A lot of people were doing works, but not everybody was raising people from the dead. So Jesus says, if you don't believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me, at least look at the evidence that what we're doing, ain't nobody rocking like this. Yeah, yeah. that's because uh, me and my daddy got a relationship that's doing something that has never been done before. And the thing is, when you have a real connection, a real relationship, not everybody understands the relationship. They marvel in the evidence. Okay, what do you mean? Let me go back to black history. Um, the greatest tennis players to ever play the game, Venus and Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. Greatest tennis players to ever play the game, Venus and Serena Williams. And, and those of you who watched the show, uh, King Richard, you got an insight, you got a, a glimpse of what he, of how he had a vision for his children. The father who never played tennis. He never played tennis, but had a vision and just put a racket in the girl's hands. So he, he did not play tennis. But he gave them the work of tennis. Just like God himself did not die for man, he gave Jesus the work of redemption. Uh, yeah, I'm not, maybe that's too deep. Maybe, maybe this is a Bible study letter. I don't know. But, but so, 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 he, so because God is a spirit and it would be illegal for a spirit to come in and intervene without a body. So what God the Father could not do, his work had to be done through his son. So his son now did something his father couldn't do, but it was his father's idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, so King Richard said... Two black girls from Compton is going to change the game. Uh -huh. and, and, and so, and, and people looking at him like, bro, you don't even know how to swing a racket uh, with your high shorts and your long socks. How, how are you, what, what you, I mean, what do you even know? But he had a vision. Uh huh. And, and the, here's the thing the relationship between the daughters and the father that they said, yes, daddy. He said, hit it like this. You, gotta, you, gotta, you need more power behind it, more force behind it. Hit it like this. He would put them out there for hours and getting them to train and doing all of this to prepare them and, and then making sure they understood that you guys are going in a realm. They're going to try to eat you up. They're going to try to annihilate you. They're going to say all this about you, but you, I don't care. You're going to be the best that ever did it. And so while everybody was looking at him like he was crazy because you don't know tennis, but you're talking about the future of tennis but when a father has a vision hallelujah it has nothing to do with outsiders think what naysayers think all he needs is an obedient child and look at how they changed the game 
they, they, they criticized Richard, said that he was dogmatic, that he was a, a taskmaster, and they did all of that. But look, oh, let me just keep going down black history. Let me keep going down black history. Y'all know Michael. Y'all know Michael, uh-huh. Y'all know Janet. Yep, y'all y'all know Michael, Janet. How about Randy and Tito and Jermaine and Reby and Latoya? All of them, right? But 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 not too many people like Joe. We don't like Joe, but we have to respect Joe. Because if Joe didn't have a vision, oh, y'all not talking to me. If Joe didn't have a vision, and if Joe did not give a guitar in his hand, put a mic in their hand, if Joe wasn't standing in front of them, showing them the ropes and showing them what to do, then you wouldn't see no... Y'all not talking to me. If, 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 you, if you did not have relationship, the relationship... The relationship with the father was unique. It, it may have been dysfunctional. It may have had issues with it. It may have had some drama in it. They wrote books about it, all of that. But can't nobody deny that when you see any of them Jacksons, you know this came from the work and the heart, the head, the idea of a father. Mm -hmm. so, so, so Jesus is like... When you see me, y'all don't like Joe, but, but, but there would be no MJ without a Joe. I know Janet wants control, but, but she wouldn't have no idea of what control is if it wasn't for Joe. Toya's little career came, I mean, at least she did a little something, but, 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 but at least, again, that was oil just because of who her father was and what was imparted. That all she had to do was try and something happened. See, when you are obedient under a vision and there's relationship with the father, whatever you try. Hallelujah. It's still going to make some kind of impact. Some might be greater than others, but at least whatever you try, there's, there's, there's a vision that's backing you. Yeah. Now, okay, Latoya and maybe Rebe weren't as talented as the others, but everybody was in anticipation of what they was going to do based on relationship. Based on relationship. Let me, let me. So here, here's, here's my point of all of this. Jesus says, so look at the evidence of the work themselves. The work that you've been seeing, all right? It's evidence that there is a connection between me and my father. And he had to do this because, remember, there was, in, in context of what was happening in the scriptures, they were saying that Jesus was preaching for, about Beelzebub. They were calling him a devil worshiper. And, and, and what authority do you have to forgive sins? And, 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 and how are you doing all of this? How come you can? He, they, he was, they was calling him a blasphemer. You coming and you and you doing stuff on the Sabbath day. So, so, so he had to show them and he was telling his disciples, wait, wait a minute. I know what, all, what they're saying. Remember, he tells them, who do men say that I am? But who do you say that I am? Y'all need to know that when you see me, you got, you're seeing the father. He says, so when you see this work that I'm doing. I'm tearing up my father's work. But he who believes in me will, watch this, not only do what I've been doing, but even greater things because I'm going to my father. Now, let, let me just, just say this. You might be saying, well, 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 because there's a lot of questions about this text. There's a lot of um, uh, misunderstanding about this text. Um, there's a lot of out of context extrapolations from this text. When we say that, that, that Jesus is saying greater works than these shall we do. It doesn't mean better works. Mm -hmm. uh, greater works than these does not necessarily mean Better works. That's not what he's saying. That, that is not what he's saying at all. Okay? And, 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 and he, he's saying to them that you're going to do greater in magnitude and impact. You're not going to do better because 
<laughs> there is no competition. You know, uh, uh, there, there, there is only one name under heaven <laughs> whereby man can be saved. There's no, no. Who, what they say, who else can do these miracles unless God be with them? So there's, there, there, no, there, I'm not, no, we're not going to be better than Jesus. We are not going to be better than Jesus. But oh, this might hurt your religion and your theology. But Jesus says you can be greater than him. Not better than him. But greater than him. Jesus says, who is the greatest among you? Them that are willing to serve. Uh, yeah. So, 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 so a, a Venus, a Serena, that they were able to be the greatest because they were able to serve. Serve and be obedient to the father's instruction and become a slave to their gift. And make the sacrifices necessary while others were sleeping, while others were saying it's too much for me, while others are saying, you know what, no, nah, no, nah, I got this to do, I got that to do. They understood that what daddy sees, I may not see it right now, but, but, but there's something greater coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so greater is not better, but, 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 but greater is greater. Ah, I'm going to say that again. Uh, greater is not better, but greater is greater. He's speaking about impact, He's speaking about magnitude. All right. And, and, and how is this going to happen? How is this going to how is the next generation going to be greater? Jesus gives you the clue. He said, because I go to the father. Because I was in him and he was in me. And in this earth realm, we had this relationship, but now I'm going back to him. And when I go back to him, I'm going to release something else through him that's going to connect with you to give you the ingredients for greater. Okay, yeah, because I go to the Father. So when Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended to the right hand of the Father, he sent us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Why is this important? Because the first time we saw the public affection of the relationship between the Father and the Son was in the baptism of the Jordan River. Where he said, behold, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. So the works that Jesus did was the Holy Spirit in one man. Uh, uh, so the works he did was because he was anointed and in relationship with his father. So because he can tap into the will of his father, he knew what the father's work was to be done in a situation. So he would go to a tomb of a dead man who was dead for four days. And when he prayed to find out what is the will of the father, then the will of the father's work was he ain't dead. He's just asleep. So he would now carry out the work. Because he had the spirit upon him without measure, right? So the spirit was on the one man, which made him work miracles, which made him walk on water, which made him heal the sick, which made him raise the dead. All of this was on one man. So the Holy Spirit on the one man let him tap into the will and the work of the father. And so whatever he did was what he saw. But he says, when I'm going to the father... I'm giving that same spirit, but not to just one of you. Not to just three of you. Not to just 12 of you. But I'm giving it to everyone who believes. Everyone who is in relationship has the ability to get what's coming. And when this comes, you are going to be able to do greater. Because there is an anointing on you. 
hallelujah, that was on me and the fullness that was on me did all of this, but I was limited because I had to put it in an earth suit. I was limited because I took on the form of and my new body is not just the one that seated at the father but the new body is a bunch of believers all around the world who believe what I said and believe what I have done and if you believe as the scripture says greater works I say greater works shall you do so the body of Christ is just a greater version of what Jesus the Christ did on his own that we can do it together and do it greater uh, so, so 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 we are the body that should be in the father and the father in us so that we can do the greater so being in relationship with the father enables us to do the greater and so I say to the greater generation that there is a generation that's representing this body of Christ there is a generation that has there is a generation that's being tutelized and, and being learned and, and a generation who is being prepared for something for such a time as this there is a generation that may not have gone to the Bible colleges and, and may not have matriculated through, through all of the masters and the doctoral degrees, but they have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a generation that like the blind man would say, I don't know anything else about him, but all I know is I once was blind, but now I see. There is a generation that's getting labeled to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. There is a generation that had to learn about him in the midst of COVID-19. A generation that had to learn about him with death all around us. A generation that had to learn about him while we were locked up in a house as if we were under warfare. A generation had to learn about him when our whole world was shut down and we didn't know what to come next. There's a generation that had to learn about him that the days ahead look uncertain but we're lifting up our eyes toward the hills from which cometh our help there is a generation that's God that's finding out hallelujah that there is a God that sits up high and looks down low there is a generation that don't want relationship with religion that don't want relationship with church as usual but they want a relationship with the true and living God hallelujah there is a generation that under understands that I am the church that I am the church and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail hallelujah look at somebody and say no weapon formed against me the church shall be able to prosper hallelujah upon this rock I build my church upon this rock your confession that I am his child and he is my Lord your confession that he is my Savior your confession that he's my Redeemer and that relationship that for God I live and for God I'll die and whatever you want me to do if you tell me to climb the highest mountain that's where I'll go I'll serve you in the beauty of holiness I'll do what you ask and when you see me hallelujah you see the father hallelujah I'm ready to tap into the greater there is a generation that's about to bust loose with greater greater anointing why because they understand the importance of relationship Think about it. Jesus uh, could not heal the sick on his own. Hallelujah. He couldn't heal the sick on his own. 
I, I read what the scripture says. The scripture says that without me, I can't do anything. I mean, without him, I can't do anything. So when you saw Jesus heal, when you saw him deliver, huh, yeah, see, the, remember, he's 100% God and 100% man. But the God part of him could not intervene. Hallelujah. Huh? So it was the man part of him that had to be the example. So the man part of him can't heal nobody huh? except I tap into what the will of the father is. And because I have relationship with the father, hallelujah, these signs will follow. Them that believe that in my name I can cast out devils, that I can heal the sick and they recover. So Jesus couldn't do any of it on his own because he was a man just like us but relationship with his father bound by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit enabled him to do even greater things than he can imagine and so for you and me hallelujah this is why you got to stir up the gift hallelujah but stir up the gift of God not your own gift hallelujah not your own agenda not your own dream not your own ideas but stir up a gift hallelujah that has been prepared that has been nurtured that has been matured hallelujah by set hands that can release you like an arrow aimed towards a target he says that once you stir up this gifting hallelujah you don't have to have a spirit of fear because you're moving in power, love, and a sound mind. You're doing what the Father wants you to do because you have relationship for the greater generation. There's a generation, the Bible says, that in the last days I'll pour my spirit on all flesh and the sons and daughters will prophesy. Again, sons and daughters are in relationship. What the Bible calls bastard is what is someone who is illegitimate without relationship with their father. Hallelujah. So, so, so the Bible would call, it would call Hagar's son Ishmael. They was trying to make him a bastard child because of no relationship to Abraham. But, but, but God said, no, 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 no. Abraham is your son too. And because of the relationship, I'm going to bless him too. My covenant is with Isaac, uh, but, 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 but I'm still going to bless him because of relationship. Yeah, so there's a greater anointing that comes from relationship. Hallelujah. And it gets even greater when you respect covenant. Oh, God. Did you hear what I said? There is a great anointing release when you have relationship Isaac got it too Ishmael got it too but there's a greater anointing when you respect the covenant of relationship the sacrifice of relationship what it cost to be connected hallelujah what it cost you to be submissive what it really see, see this is this is a lesson that we don't preach or we don't teach we just tell them do the work of the evangelist make full proof of your ministry and without proper context people are trying to prove their ministry but, 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 but here no 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 the scripture says that that we are in relationship when you've seen my manner of living and what i've imparted into you you have what you need to do greater and make full proof of the ministry Hallelujah. Covenant. Jesus had covenant, had a relationship with his father that did major things. And now he's telling his disciples, because you're in relationship, greater things are these going to happen for you. You thought what I did was something. Even greater is coming because of your relationship and your willingness to serve. Oh, what's going to cost you? Submission means to submit to the mission. <laughs> it's going to cost, and, and, and submission, 
So, and, and I say this all the time. Submission is different than obedience. Because obedience means that you do what you're supposed to do. You do the will of the Father. I obey. I do what I am supposed to do. But submission is when you do what you're supposed to do, even if you don't feel like it, even if you don't want to, even if you don't agree with, I submit to the Father's mission. And, and we don't have too much teaching and preaching on that. But that's why Jesus says those who is willing to serve, who he, he tells the disciples, because uh, they said, I want to sit on your right and on your left. They wanted high seats. They wanted high seats of recognition and association. But Jesus says, are you willing to sit from the cup of relationship? Of what it will cost you to sit in these seats. Because it's going to cost you to submit and sacrifice even when it comes to your very life being in jeopardy. So it costs for greater. We want to do great things for God, great things in the kingdom, great things for your family, great things in your business. But it costs. It costs to be great. But Jesus has given us the discount. And the discount is, just serve me. Just get to know the Father. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Because if you're in me and I'm in you, you can ask what you will. The last part of the text we read today, he says, so whatever you ask in my name, I'm doing it. Why? Because we're in relationship. When you ask in the name of Jesus, you're saying that basically put it on his tab. <laughs> I'm using his credit card. Yeah. yeah, think about it. When you use your mother's credit card or their debit card, your name is not on it. But when you submit it, hallelujah, they're, they're sanctioning your purchase based on the name on the card. So whatever you ask the Father in his name, he's saying, I've already paid the price. And because we're in relationship, you can have the greater. Father, I'm praying for my brothers and my sisters who are looking for greater, expecting greater, moving into greater. I'm praying that we understand relationship with you. Thank you, Lord. That relationship with you is more important than anything. Knowing presidents and knowing famous people and knowing important people doesn't mean that we're going to carry out a kingdom assignment but knowing Jesus knowing our heavenly father is the key ingredient to help us to do greater father I pray for those who are watching right now that we would strengthen our relationship with you first yes Lord we need a relationship with you some of us have, may have had our relationships breached and, and broken because of disappointment in life, because of the cares of this world. But Father, we repair, we, 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 we repent, and we refresh, we renew our relationship today. If we're going to make history and do even greater, our relationship with you has to be intact. So, Father, help us to say what the Father says. Do what we see the Father do. Be what the Father wants us to be. Father, we ask that you would strengthen our relationships with church. That you would give proper context to our relationships to church. That our relationship to church should not be greater than the relationship to the God of the church. But our relationship to the God of the church would help us to respect and reverence the church that feeds us. So Father, I pray as we prepare for a return to the church a return to the building, a return to public gathering. Father, help us to have a reverence. Because I rebuke that demon that says the church is no longer relevant. 
the church is more relevant now than we've ever been before so father help us to reestablish relationship with the local church and relationship with the global church to know that we can do even greater things together within our communities collaborations unity with one accordness so father help us to strengthen our relationship with church that we are one body but can make greater impact than what the one man jesus did if we the body can play our place and our part as members so help us to strengthen our relationship with god our relationship as as the church and in our relationships with one another hallelujah our relationship with God is vertical but just as the cross there's a relationship that's horizontal so father strengthen not only our relationship with you but how we affect one another strengthen our relationship with our families we come against the, the breaches of families of sons and daughters against mothers and fathers and vice versa. You said so that you will not smite the earth with a curse that you would turn the hearts back. Father, strengthen our relationships with families. Understanding that sometimes you'll bring a sword. That my, who is my family? Them that do the will of God. We understand that there's that time in which, which we may have to separate possibly in order to come back together again. But I pray that we understand proper relationships that those you've put around us. Relationship with our families, relationship within our ministries, relationships with our spouses, relationships, Lord God. We pray that you will have our horizontal relationship represent you. That when they see us, they see you, the Father. And we give you glory, we give you honor and praise for the greater that's coming. Because we are going to do what you've done. Respond how you respond. React how you reacted. Move like you moved. Show compassion like you show compassion. Forgive like you forgive. Take authority like you've taken authority. We're going to do the works that you've done but even greater because of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you put your hands together if you are a part of Generation Greater? <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Uh, within, within that prayer, we prayed about restoring relationship with God. If you made a commitment to restore your relationship back to God, I want you to text us. I want you to, to comment to us that I'm starting my life all over again. I'm starting fresh. I want to start fresh with my relationship with him because I'm expecting greater. You cannot have the greater without the relationship. Cannot have it. If it wasn't for Don Dino, you wouldn't have seen the, the great glimpses of Pele. If it wasn't for Joseph, for Joe, you wouldn't have seen the greatness of Kobe. If it, if it was not for... If it was not for all of those examples that we gave. So the greatness that you want to do, it's got to be your relationship with God intact. Hallelujah. And then the people will see your works, but glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Praise God. If you were blessed by the word, clap your hands. Give me some hearts. Give me some emojis. Do whatever you got to do. Let it be known that you are blessed and impacted by the word of God. We want to prepare ourselves to continue to worship him in the realm of giving. We believe that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Even in giving, it speaks of our relationship. What do you mean? God so loved the world that he gave. Well, we could just stop right there. Yeah, his only begotten son, which was his best. So love motivates us to give. And love is an expression of relationship that we have towards one another. And so our love to God because of what he's done for us 
how he has blessed us how he has kept us healed us for our love for him we cannot even repay him for all he's done for us but we can express an attitude of gratitude by giving back what already belongs to him so i want you to give today you can give through paypal you can give through cash app you can give through give la five whatever you do i want you to give cheerfully but i want you to put in the hashtag the word greater yeah put that in the memo the word greater yeah see because as long as your relationship with god is intact all right your relationship with people are intact yeah yeah now you can go with confidence believing god that greater is coming your way do you know that the bible says something to men he said to men be careful on how you deal harshly with your wives so that your prayers would not be hindered in other words your relationship of how you deal with the people that you're close to can affect your prayers from being heard and answered yeah so 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 don't just get it right with god if you can't get it right with me uh, the, the Bible says, uh, "How do you love your father whom you've not seen, but 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 you hate your brother whom you've seen every day?" No, we got to get that straight so that we can step into the greater. So my relationship with him is intact. Relationship with them is intact. Therefore, when I sow this seed, I'm standing in agreement that greater is coming to my life, to my family, and greater is going to take us all the way. To reach our destiny father we now come to freely and joyfully give our tithes and offerings we stand upon your word that you will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive and you will rebuke the enemy so he cannot destroy we are living in the now faith and in all areas of our lives we have total victory